Chow Jewelry Making Friends. Welcome to my work table. My name is Joey Balistrieri and before I share with you what's on my beading mat which is mostly from this month's uh, dollar bead box and dollar bead bag. I'm doing another project. I just wanted to share with you a couple of little orders that I have received from artisans who make beads, ceramic beads, and that kind of thing. So I did a small order from a lady who actually lives here in Florida, and she does all kinds of ceramic bracelet components and charms, you know, and connectors. She has an Etsy shop, and these were the three pieces that I ordered from her. I just love how handmade but lovely they are, and they have sort of a natural organic feel to them and lately I've just been on a bracelet making binge. I just have bracelets on the mind. So like this is one that I did a video on and I'm just pulling out beads that I've had that I love to feature. These little check glass birds I have in so many colors and I created this little cha-cha design on this one and I think I'm going to repeat that in the one that I'm working on and so I have a few bracelet things coming up but this is her the little invoice Debbie Johnson ceramics and she does have an Etsy shop so that's just some of those things and then I did a small order from Humble Beads and this is the beautiful little bag that it came in and it's just a small order but this was one of the things that was in the humble beads order that i did and i just love this color of this little check glass bird to go with some of the beads that came in this month's dollar bead bag so i'm kind of connecting the dots um, but I just did a small order from her company. I just want to show you quickly some of the things that I got from her because they go so beautifully with, you know, springtime themes of birds and flowers and things blooming and like branches and that sort of thing. So I love cylinder beads and I just love the finish on these. So I ordered that in two colors. Look at this one. I also have been working a lot with copper lately, partly because I just love it, but also it was the metal of the dollar bead bag. It was the, the we got findings and a sort of some things with copper washes in the dollar bead this month, and it just inspired me. So look at this. I hope the camera is showing you how the beauty of this. It looks like it's just been bathed in copper, and it has that kind of satin very natural finish underneath these beads. They are absolutely beautiful. I mean, I just loved, my order was small from this company, but I just loved what I got. And then I got a couple more of these check glass birds in this color, and I'll show you uh, some pieces that I did a few years ago using these birds, and I was so happy to replenish because I think I may want to do a necklace and I'll show you what else I got from Humble Beads in the idea of a necklace. I got these beautiful branch connectors. As I said, I have like spring on the brain, but look at these beautiful little, like they could be a bracelet bar, but I'm seeing necklace and I'm seeing birds and flowers <laughs> with that. So I ordered those and then I got this beautiful little hammered toggle. It looks, it, it, it is a branch, the, the bar part. This part is hammered and this little part, the part that goes inside the hole is an actual little, looks like a stick or a branch. So you can tell that I really have um, sort of the same theme and design on my mind because sometimes my orders are very random and <laughs> you know when you lay it all out it doesn't look like you had any project in mind but definitely you could see that with this and then her website had these beautiful little branch connectors and I just love them I just saw a lot of design possibilities in that so um, I also got, I'm always, pretty much every time I place a bead order from any company, I will add to my leaf and flower the stash because I use them so much. And look at these 
fabulous leaves. Aren't they gorgeous? I love the olive color. I love the gold wash. I love the shape. I love the way they're drilled. The hole goes from side to side, you can see. So yeah, like just like lots of <laughs> design possibilities there. And then as I said, I always add to flowers and leaves when I order from any company. I'll, I'll always peruse those sections of the website because it's just something I love to work with. And flowers are a big jewelry fashion trend for 2024. You know, not really a flower explosion, but like statement flowers in our pieces. So I've kind of had that in mind too, as I've been designing. And then she sweetly gives a little thank you and put a couple beads. And I think these are her handmade beads. I actually didn't even open it yet, but I think these are her little polymer clay beads. Aren't they adorable? They look a little bit like, they look a little bit like bird eggs. And I just love the color, the, the little, the little speckling on them. Just beautiful. So that was kind of a little mini <laughs> unboxing. And I had also posted in my community tab to see if anybody would like a tutorial on making these wire birds nests it is a very old design i think every jewelry designer every channel has at some point done a tutorial on this so i didn't want to be redundant and this is a bracelet that i did several years ago i honestly don't even remember when i did it but one of the things i like to do when i make a bird's nest is make a little area where I can slip a jump ring in and dangle some greenery, you know, so that it's kind of a metaphorical like nest in the tree. And, and you see, I've been loving these <laughs> check glass birds and flowers for a very long time. And this is a bracelet that I just love. I made it for myself and I tend to get it out in the spring. But um, if you would like to leave in the comments, if you're interested in seeing how I do the wire bird's nest, this is a really old one that I did. And I wear this on a pink, very small pink leather cord. And um, this one is starting, my wire is starting to tarnish a little bit, which doesn't necessarily look bad. It, you know, it kind of has that natural bird's nest look, but I have always tended to do a little leaf dangle you know, I didn't add a bird. I kept this one very simple and I used freshwater pearls for the eggs on this one. But um, if you're interested in seeing how I do this, even though I know it's an old design and it's been done, you know, let me know in the comments and I'll incorporate it in another video that I'm planning to do. But today I am working on a bracelet and you can see that I have quite a bit of it laid out here. So in this bracelet, I made 12 little wire, um, not wire wrapped, simple loop little components that are thread onto a small section of 20 gauge wire with just simple loops on the end. And when it sits on your wrist, all of those leaves and flowers just stand up and it just looks alive. And it was kind of, you know, poetic for me, like my little bird is sitting on a flowering bush or tree. I mean, I just love this bracelet. I, I've been wearing it a lot since I made it. So I want to do something similar in this bracelet, but I'm going to do less components. These are a little bit larger. Like I have these really neutral colored, kind of heart shaped leaves. And I just, this whole bracelet is going to be in the neutrals with copper and white and you know like little there's a little bit of gold wash on things but these are the components and i would i saved out one to do along with you i'm using um ball head pins that are from potomac beads the new athena cast line i love those i really have enjoyed working with them and then but most of my components are coming from the dollar bead bag and the dollar bead box for this month so i already cut this apart and kind of put it back together because this is a this is a bead that has a hole like at the top corner of the square but i honestly liked the way it looked kind of organic and random you know sort of stacked on top of each other and just letting them fall the way they will so i have this thinking that i might even do a little section that way on my bracelet but it looks like my length is already where i need it to be 
and then I have just picked out things now I got this little bird from humble beads and um, but this was in the the box this month this beautiful check glass flower was in the box this month these I have added in from my stash these were the flowers that they had on the softlex company website a few months ago I don't know if there's any left but they had four colors maybe more I don't remember but you know I just love those and I had not used them yet and then these little beads let me just pull the whole dish these were in our box this month these gorgeous fluted beads with like the little copper wash in the grooves of the fluted part they are stunning and this is a little charm from dollar bead box and i just set this out here because when i do the finishing touches on my bracelet i like to add in things like that and then both of these strands were also from the i don't remember if they were from the dollar bead bag or the box or maybe one of each I don't remember because I unbox them together but I love this this website it is a great value the monthly subscription is a great value and you do have to be a member to shop their website but once you are you can go on their website and reorder th most things for a dollar and they just have really they have some findings they have check glass buttons and i love it for that and like the dollar bead bag is only eight dollars a month so if you're interested i'll leave my discount code in the description box of the video and you can use it and get a discount from your first box so let's work on this <laughs> bracelet now i am also um, have taken this from our march bargain bead box it i love this little copper component and coincidentally the boxes all used copper this month so that was another kind of inspiring thing and i love the copper so i'm using in the wires that you see i'm using 20 gauge uh, from beadalon 20 gauge medium tempered german style wire and it has an anti-tarnish coating on it and that i have made a little sample clasp a little hook and I have a little scrap of chain left over from my stash and you know that I that's my plan for my closure for this bracelet and I'm using Softlex company's craft wire that has an anti-tarnish coating for my hook that is this it is um, 18 gauge and it just makes a great great hook it's nice and stable so what I need to do left on this bracelet is create simple loops on these components and, you know, connect things and check my length. So I'll show you sort of what I did here. Let me take my wires out. So these are the, the ball head pins from Athena Cast on the Potomac Beads website that I'm using. And so for this component, I have like stacked those little square beads with one of those check glass crystals and I'll do one with you so I'll show you what I did I just put the crystal first because it's going to be this way and then these little beads have this really colorful side and then they have this more copper side so I strung them all on so that the, the more copper side is what you will see on my bracelet when it's you know in the little cha-cha so it looks you know it looks like that and then I used my one and a half millimeter one step looper to do all of my loops I know some people do not like this tool but I do it I've practiced with it and I use it quite well I get really perfect loops and it saves my hand from the twisting motion that we do constantly when we have to make a lot of loops so for me I love that tool and I can link it in the description box if any of you are interested and so that's what my how my components were created and they are very simple and I've done all of these just that way my little neutral green leaves my little tulip beads I've just done all of them that way and so what I plan to do is take my two and a quarter inch one step looper and put a simple loop in this end and then I am going to string on all of those little 
components and let's see how I want to do it. I try to work in odd numbers. So I've done three of each of these components. So let me start with this little tulip. And then this can be random because as you see on this one, they move all around and you know nobody really knows how you strung it when you create this type of a component. But I'm going to do, let's see, another leaf. Just get these all on. Let's see, I'll do the leaf next. And this, I liked the little squares with the, uh, with the little crystal on the top. It added in a little bit of the white and I don't know, it just kind of looks like, you know, all the trees are flowering in the spring and there's just all kinds of little blooms and little things that sometimes we don't even know what they are. And so for, for me, that little square stack just mimicked that and looked very spring. So this is going to be a smaller component than the one that I did here. As I said, I put 12 little, little simple loop items on this component. So this one is going to be a bit smaller. And all I did is kind of get it down and you really won't see your loop. So it doesn't much matter what direction it's going in. And I did use the two and a quarter millimeter loop just to, you know, on a bracelet, it just makes it move more freely and just get that loop in there and you can do this with your pliers as well if you prefer to make your simple loops with your pliers you know it doesn't matter how you get them in there just get them in there so there is that little little section and I'm going to continue and make all of these components I'll do one with you and then I'll do the rest off camera it's you know so it's not boring to see someone repeat the same thing over and over again you know, this is very repetitive. Also um, in this, is if you can see, I had picked up these copper crystal rondelle spacers at a bead show and I just love them in this color. You know, I, you typically see gold and silver and I just love the copper and it just went so well with the little bird that I ordered from Humble Beads and all the copper that were in the boxes we received this month. So let me... I do my I do my loops it really I don't think anybody notices when your loop is closed up well but I do my loops in opposite directions so if this one is going down that way then I'll do this one going up and I just alternate through a piece like that I don't know why I just do <laughs> you know it, I've heard other people say oh all your loops need to be going in the same direction and you know if that's what looks good to you then by all means, <laughs> do that. <laughs> I do mine opposite. So my, my little bird looks great. I love him. And then I'm going to create another little component. Let me cut another little piece of this 20 gauge wire. And I'll show you how I'm going to do the little heart component. And then I'll finish the rest off camera and come back and we can connect these this bracelet together and get a measurement I love the elegance of this white and copper and then adding in some of those neutral you know kind of neutral copper tulip beads it's just a beautiful combination and something that you could just wear with anything if you have been on my channel at all you know that I love seed beads. I think they're very powerful in design. They can really give you the perfect amount of space. They can alternate a color as you'll see here. So I love this little, it, this bead is small that we got in the box, but can you see that it has that little AB finish on one side of it and it just really adds a lot of flash and a lot of beauty in the design. And then I want the point of my heart bead to rest right down inside that crystal rondelle spacer and then I just need to like fill in this little bit of space 
And so this is where seed beads can be so powerful. They can be workhorses in your design. I mean, look, it just gives that little dot of copper. And then when I make my loop, I won't have like a weird space at the at the tip of the heart, you know, where the bow of the heart is. So yeah, even if you're not, I think sometimes if you're not a bead weaver, I think sometimes people that don't like to make, you know, do those woven designs will overlook or ignore seed beads in design because they, you know, in, in your head, you think, oh, it's for bead weavers. And, you know, they just really can be workhorses, workhorses in design. I mean, instead of having a weird space there, I it's just lovely. It has a very professional, beautiful finishing touch. Just going to take two pairs of pliers and just straighten out those loops if they need it. I have this little component that I made. I think I'm going to need three. I'm trying to get three little sections to attach to this connector and I've done an extra little component just a single one in case I need to need it to make my three links exactly the same but this component is exactly what I've been doing throughout the whole piece is just getting that simple loop and the reason I did choose the two and a quarter millimeter loop is just because I'm not putting jump rings in between I'm going to connect these one directly to the other <clears throat> and having that little bit larger loop it's not the largest there's a three millimeter in the one step looper as well but having that little bit larger loop just will make the sections of the bracelet free flowing and articulate a little bit better and so here's another you know here's another um another instance where seed beads are so powerful to give you extra space to alternate a color you know to add a little something to design i mean this is a super simple little component but it keeps my copper and crystal going and you know i can see my copper wire going right through this bead which i love and i just like that little created almost like a bar like a little linear look so I mean look how powerful seed beads are in making a little beaded chain you know they just do a lot of work and they are inexpensive easy to find and you have a lot of size and shape possibilities <laughs> as well mm -hmm. so that is the that is that simple little component and just close this one and I will be ready to connect let me finish making my loops on these and I will be right back okay I can start connecting so I'm going to start up here with my little sort of cha-cha <laughs> bead I just love this I just recently discovered this method of making a little simple loop piece of wire and stringing my components onto it. I normally, in most designs like this, would string these right onto some kind of bead stringing material. And um, I just absolutely love the way this looks. And it makes kind of like a bead in itself, like a living bead, like it's just lovely. And what I will say is you definitely can open the simple loops and attach them to things but since there's a lot going on there sometimes it's easier to open the loop of your next bead <laughs> so to speak so um, I'm going to do that now I normally would have this beneath my bird just because it looks like the bird is sitting on the leafy plant and I kind of think that I kind of think that that is what I want to do again so I'm gonna I had them laid out I had my beads laid out a little bit differently than that but I like that and I think it just looks really good when the bird is sitting on this little leafy section so as I said open it's a little bit easier to open 
the simple loop under a single bead than it is this cha-cha bead. <laughs> I guess that's going to be the name of it. It's a cha-cha bead. It's beautiful, however. And you know, if you do a whole bracelet with this cha-cha style, it can be quite heavy and quite busy and you know, not something that you could just wear every day, but when you just do a small little section like that, it is extremely wearable and it adds dimension and texture to a line of beads and it is just absolutely beautiful that way. You know, I have done bracelets where I did a whole bunch of these or where the whole thing was like a charm cha-cha style and it can be quite busy and quite heavy, but look at that, it's just beautiful. I just love it. So I'm gonna to go to my next flower here and just connect it. This is the really fun, exciting part when you have sat and made a whole bunch of components and chosen all your beads and all the different design decisions and then you get to the point of connecting everything and it's looking like a piece of jewelry or a piece of art actually. These bracelets with all of this check glass, they just, they look like artwork, they look like you know sort of boutique pieces or you know they're just art very artisan i love it oh, i love that so i'm going to take two pairs of pliers and i'm just going to turn one loop so if you can see the the flower is spinning around but i want this top loop to be going horizontally to my mat and this loop to be going perpendicular to my mat and hopefully what that's going to do is when I attach it to this component everything will lay flat on the wrist but with a bracelet like this a lot of times I will just go ahead and do my attaching and then anything that I need to finesse the orientation of turn the loop or add a jump ring I will do it when I'm all done connecting because it's just so much easier to see where you're going and it looks like that may have worked at least on the mat it looks like that may have worked let me zoom in for you so you can see see what i did i have this loop going horizontally to my mat and this loop up and down and then <clears throat> and then this component you know it can attach into that so everything lays nicely on the wrist so hopefully that is going to work so let me start by connecting my middle section okay so i have all three of my beaded chains connected to that connector and now right here where the three come together I think it will work to have a fairly large jump ring so um, I could use this one I also have debated about just connecting my chain right to the three loops let's try that this chain is just left over from bead box bargains it was something i had in my stash and what i like about it is a really heavy gauge of the rings but also you'll see when i try to open it 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 is not soldered so you can open the links but it is really strong chain it makes a great like jewelry chain so let me connect these three and see if this is going to work and just see how it looks you know sometimes the mechanics of a, of a piece you know you have to work work that out you can have the picture of the design in your head but how it actually works and wears is sometimes a little trial and error this is i love this chain but it is tough to open and close I have it most of the way and it looks like the rings the links on this are going to be great for this let's see yeah it looks like it's going when it curves around the wrist it looks like it's going to work beautifully let me see oh yes and then when I make my hook 
this bracelet will be adjustable because you have four different links to choose from. I'm going to show you how I do these little hooks. They are really fun to make, very organic. <clears throat> they do not take much wire or much time. And I do hammer these when I make these. And normally I do that off camera because of the pounding and the table jumping. But I have had a couple of people say that they would really like to see that process and see how I know when to stop hammering. So I, I will show you that today. I'll warn you when I'm about to start pounding. So if you want to fast forward or, or mute your volume, you can do that. So on this one, I tried something a little bit different. On this one, I did this strange thing where I had a tail coming out the middle of my spiral because I just wanted a decorative wrap around the stem of my hook. And um, I, it was okay. I'm not in love with it. It has one side that looks a lot better than the other. But let me show you. This is the another bracelet. Um, this is in another video where I just did like a really pretty little spiral and left myself enough space to connect it. And so I think I'm going to do this one again. I really like that one. And if you didn't see this bracelet video where I did this one and this one, I can link it below because there are some you know pretty techniques in that. Um, but I'm kind of doing, oh, I forgot I used that same chain. And so this one, this bracelet is also fully adjustable. It has all of those possibilities for length on there. So making this type of bracelet is great to sell because it literally fits everybody. It's also great for gifts because you don't so much have to worry about the length. So let me show you how I start these little hooks. The first thing that I will do, let me get some of these tools out of the way. The first thing that I will do is make this scrolly base. So I'm going to just start making my little spiral there. And um, I don't want this to be a tight spiral. I want it to be a little bit open because I need to attach it. And I, you know, I need to attach it to my bracelet, but I also want it to look, you know, I don't know, kind of sculptural. So I'm going to just try to leave some space in there as I'm doing the spiral. And I, am not worried about marring this because I am going to mar it when I hammer and texture it. And that will remove some of the anti-tarnish coating from it. But, and then it, so it will darken over time, but with the antique copper and like the dark and light in the copper, I think it's only going to add to the beauty. So let me stop talking and show you what I did. Can you see that in my spiral, I have created a little open space here. That's what you want because when you do a little hook like this, you need to have a place to attach it. And so I don't want this really tight. And you know, this 18 gauge wire is a little bit tougher than, than 20 gauge to maneuver, but you don't have much to do here. And so that is about what I'm going to do. I'm not going to spend too much time fussing with this right now because when you hammer things you work hard in it you change the shape you alter it a bit everything sort of spreads out so i'm not going to spend too much time because i'll come back to it after i've done my hammering and then you can use bail making pliers for this but i'm going to use my round nose pliers i'm going to like put my wire down to the larger part and again I am going to come back and hand sculpt this and really change this, but this is the hook part. So I'm just going to wrap that around the top barrel of those pliers. So it looks like that. And I want this really exaggerated hook. And you can see, I think I had a little scrap that was maybe four inches of wire and you can see I have so much left over. So, you know, it's, you don't need much wire to make these hooks. So I really love that and I just want to leave myself a little bit of space to do a little curly cue on the end. So I'm going to trim that away and come back in with my, in fact, I'm going to do something a little strange. I love my Zuron crimping pliers. Can you see how tiny 
the tip is when I need just a tiny little loop or a tiny little bend, I love these crimping pliers for that. Look how perfect and tiny you can get your, your loop with those pliers. So, you know, just because they're crimping pliers doesn't mean you can't use them for other things. So I'm going to make a little space here, done with the seed beads. I think I'm done with those spacers. I think I'm done with those beads. These I'm done with. And I'm not sure if that's going to be my drop. I really like um, a small, oh, where is it? I was going to show you. I really like, that's pretty, but I really, on these spring bracelets, I really love to have a little flower and leaf dangle on the end. It is so sweet and so pretty. So I may go back into my stash and find a little something to go on this. I'm not sure I do like the spiral and it does match the clasp. So this is my bench block. It's quite heavy. I can link this below. This is an Amazon product and I'm gonna put this on my table and I have several different hammers and you know you get different looks with different hammers. So this is one of my hammers that I can use for flattening. I can hit the edge of the wire with this and get texture in there. Then I also have a ball peen hammer so I can use this end for flattening and this round end for getting texture in it. They both they both work and there's also a chasing hammer but the chasing hammer has, um, let me show you for those of you who don't know since I have been asked about the hammering process, the chasing hammer has a larger head on it so for something so small I want to be careful not to smash my fingers and I want to have a little more control so I tend to go for the ball peen hammer when I'm doing something so small and I'll just like get my finger out of the way I'm gonna hammer so for those of you that don't want to hear the pounding you can mute or fast forward it and it really doesn't it really doesn't take a lot of very heavy pounding but that is all I'm going to do. And I do both sides. I just really want to flatten it and just keep moving it around so that I can get to the parts. And sometimes I even do this, like move my fingers out of the way on such a small hook so that I can flatten the whole thing. And can you see what's happening? When you flatten and hammer, you are work hardening, but you're, you, you spread everything out and that is totally okay. We can come back in with our pliers and make those adjustments so it looks the way we want. And I just love, I just love the way these hooks look flattened. It's just beautiful. And now you can either use like the very edge of a hammer, like I like the edge of this one, to give kind of a pounded look. I also really like the ball peen end to put dents, you know, that hammered, classic hammered look. And, you know, somebody asked me in the comments, like, how do you know when you're done hammering? And I guess it's by feel. I didn't really know how to answer that, but it's how it looks. And when it's flat enough, I mean, if you keep, if you keep pounding, obviously you'll make the wire brittle and you'll, you know, come to a point when it, it's not good. But look at how beautiful. Can you see the hammering, the texture? In real life, it just looks so artisan. And since it's a bracelet and it will be seen on both sides and flip around on whoever's wearing it, which is probably going to be me. I just want to make sure that I take my time and go the whole length of my hook and make sure that my dented texture is appearing. And again, if you're doing a really small, a really small hook, and this is for those of you who have never worked with a bench block or hammered your pieces, you can also like use the edge of your bench block, like pull this off of the edge to get your fingers out of the way. 
Uh, sometimes if, a, if I'm hammering a piece that's really small, I'll get my plier like that and get my texturing done if, you know, if you're worried about your fingers. But you know, just go slowly and be careful. It looks like I need a little bit more texturing right here. Okay, let me take all of this out of the way. And now you can see that that pretty shape that we had on the hook, we have distorted it, but that is okay. I'm going to come back and close, close that little loop. And here you can hand sculpt your piece if you want to, you can use pliers. Sometimes I will do a little bit of everything. So here's the thing you really need to pay attention to. We need an area to put our jump ring, but we don't want the jump ring to come out. So you just need to close up your spiral where you need it to be closed up and also have it going in the direction that you want it to go in. So I would like to turn mine down a little bit. I want my jump ring to go in there. These are very organic and very free form and there is no right or wrong in doing your little hook like this. So that is part of the fun is they're sculptural and I'll come in and like kick that out a little bit and you know like get the shape that I want. You can also, I really like the shape of this one but if you're unhappy or if you've hammered your shape out, you can come back in with your round nose pliers and put some, some curviness back into it. But I think it's a really, really pretty hook. I love it. And so now I can choose my jump ring that I need for, I'm going to go on this end choose my little jump ring. I'm debating if I can even, well, I'm going to try without a jump ring because I do have these two and a quarter millimeter loops on this bracelet and I left myself a little space in there. It's not even enough space for that, but I quite like the idea of having my hook right onto the last bead and also I don't want my length to get too to get too long. I tend to do that with bracelets. I need about a seven to a seven and a quarter inch bracelet and I tend to get really long with my length but I'm just going to make a little adjustment to my spiral. So can you see I just expanded that little area where I want to attach. Let's see. If I have to get a jump ring, I will, but I'm try gonna try it this way. Let's see how that works. And I also love making my own class. Can you see this wire is the same color and everything. This is 20 gauge and this is 18 gauge, but the wire matches. It's so nice to have that. So let's see how I did. I have this other bracelet on as well, but. One thing I love about this cha-cha uh, section of the bracelet is the way they it sits on your arm. It makes when it's on your arm, it makes everything stand up. So let's see how I did. Very pretty. This bracelet is a little bit long for me. So I may have to readjust. I don't mind bracelets being a little bit long, but in this case, I think I may have to readjust my pattern just a little bit. It's just a little bit, it's just a little bit too long for me. I am going to pause the camera and see what I have uh, as an option for a little charm on the end of my on the end of my chain here and also see how I can adjust my pattern to make my length a little bit shorter. So I'm going to pause and go into my stash and I will be right back. And so this was a 
very long pause for me, only a second for all of you, but life happens when I pause to do what I needed to do. Life happened and it is the next day and I am todaying. <laughs> and so I know my mat looks different because I worked on this a little bit last night before I went to bed and I'm finally back to finishing my bracelet and showing you what changes I made and finishing my video. So I did go into my stash as I said I would and found this beautiful little check glass bell flower with an AB finish on it, which I was thrilled to find because it matches the AB finish on this flower. So that is going to be my tiny little dangle embellishment on the end of this chain. And I'll just show you quickly uh, I'll link these below. This is a collection of check glass bell flowers that I got from Amazon, I think two years ago, some time ago. And I have done countless projects from this bag. And as you can see, I still have a ton left and I constantly pull from this for little earrings, dangles, finishing, extender chains on pieces and no matter what color I'm working in I can pretty much guarantee that there will be a flower in here that works for whatever project so I'll link this below in case any of you are interested it's a great little source to have in your supply so that is where my little dangle <coughs> that is where my little dangle came from and my bracelet also looks different if you will notice I wanted to shorten the length just a little bit because I'm really happy with the length on this one. Now this one will have be adjustable because I am leaving those four little lengths of chain, but I just felt like it was a bit too long for me. And so when I started playing with what needed to be removed to shorten the length, I really did not want to give up any of my flowers and it really came down to this section here. So this poor component from Bargain Bead Box has been ousted from the design and I ended up taking another little link from my chain and putting it as the connection to go from my single bead into my double strand bead. And because I love these check glass fluted beads so much, I decided to just keep those and take away all the smaller components. And then as it was laying on my beading mat, there was this negative space in between these two beads, which I actually like, but I start, I have all the components that I had made that I've removed and I thought, oh, I wonder how that would look there. So I have simply opened those simple loops and connected them and I quite like that little bridge across so it made a kind of an, a special component that was completely unplanned so I'm really happy with the way that it turned out and I'll just show you a little trick I don't know if you can see what I did but when you have beads that are a bit larger and they're not laying nicely next to each other on a link like this you can go to a much larger link here to give them some more space. But if you don't want to do that or don't have that, you can also simply take your pliers and can you see how the simple loop is just, I just bent it towards the middle and did the same thing here. And then same thing on this end, just a slight bend in that simple loop going that way and that way and it just makes it lay nicely so even if you decided not to do the little bridge component they still look really good even though they're a little bit fatter bead so that's just a little design trick if you ever have a, a situation like that and you want to make it work um, so the last thing that I have to do for this bracelet is make a simple loop on my little dangle and I'm going to do that with my one and a half millimeter one step looper. Get my little check glass leaf out of the way and just get my little bend in there. And that's going to go on the final link of my extender chain. And 
and just make sure it's closed really well. So I quite love that. Oh my, this bracelet is so beautiful. I love the colors. It's so neutral. It's I uh, just love the, the creamy whites and the copper and that neutral green. And really, no matter which way I turn it, it is stunning. I should have taken my other bracelet off, but I'm just enjoying wearing these so much. So let me see if I can clasp this on camera. It is usually not easy to do. <laughs> As every person who films their work will tell you. I think I got it. Oh, wow. Look at this. It is so beautiful. I just love the way it turned out. I love my special little component section that, you know, just happened by playing with the design and with the length and like no matter which way this turns on my arm, there is just something delicious and delightful. And so here, I'll just show you the difference. This is nine little cha-cha components and this one is 12. So I don't, if you're going to try to do something like this, that might give you a little idea. So I'm gonna keep him on my arm and you see there are other things on my mat here. This bracelet is completely finished because when I took off all of the components that I had made, I decided to do a simple line bracelet. I made a small little component with the elements that are already in my other bracelets, added it to that little charm that I didn't use on my other bracelet and I simply opened the simple loops and connected them and I have this delightful little line bracelet. For me, this is classic. A beaded chain is my go-to. I love a beaded chain and it really features and showcases favorite beads, which I loved these beads. All of these were my favorites in this box. I love the kind of AB finish on half of this little bead and I love these melon beads and I even used the toggle that was in our dollar bead box this month. So this could be a layering bracelet. I'm looking a bit flowery <laughs> at the moment, but it could be a layering bracelet with this if I wanted to or you know by itself. So let me show you what else is on my mat because I had other components as well and so I took a little a kind of combined boxes I took a little bit of the copper curb chain that was in the March bargain bead box and I have attached it to the other links that I just connected them together and I have attached it right beside the beaded chain that I made and taken some little small jump rings and just connected it. Now this was a little bit, a little bit fiddly. I don't even know if that's a word, but I really just had to, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. I really just had to make sure that the curb chain was totally flat and see where, like, let's see where the link in the chain lined up with my simple loop in my beaded chain and then put that little jump ring and then I went back and made some more dangles with those ball head pins and I just attached it so that when this is on it will lay like right beside you know like right beside the beaded chain and so there is one special element in this little bracelet and that is a jump ring with seed beads thread on it and I will show you how I did that it is a really fun technique to kind of change up the look of things so I just took one of my jump rings that I've been using in all of these bracelet projects and I just opened it fairly wide and I was able to fit five seed beads on a jump ring. 
If you would like to do this on a larger scale, you could make your own jump rings or go, for, I think these are eight millimeter jump rings. And so I was able to fit five beads, but it is that simple. Hold on to the jump ring with your plier and it does start to get a little more difficult. You may have to move your plier out of the way and kind of let those seed beads fall down and you know just be patient go slowly and you'll see you end up with not a whole lot of room left for closing it and I'm going to have to actually reposition my pliers so I made four of these just to be a fun unusual link in my beaded chain and so here's where you can see it's a little bit tricky to close up your jump ring but it's not terrible it's doable and so then you have this cool little link that looks like so much more than a jump ring and seed beads and so that's what uh, has gone into the pattern on this additional little bracelet so I just was playing with the components that I removed from this bracelet I did not want to waste them I love the beads I loved everything and I didn't want to waste them so the only thing I have left to do on this one is to go into my stash and find a little clasp and I will have a little set of bracelets so these could be worn together and layered or separately and I was just thrilled with them I mean I just loved the beads that were in this month's dollar bead box and bead bag and when I love beads I keep designing I don't want to put them away so that is exactly what happened <laughs> when I was finishing and as I said I have combined a couple of our boxes so I had ordered these beautiful flower ear wires from the sister website to bargain bead box it's bead box bargains and if you are a subscriber to the monthly box you can go on their website and shop and get 30 percent off your entire order so i bought these in gold and i bought them in copper and i think they might have had them in silver and i was kind of saving them for special beads so with my beads that were left over I I took the exact same components that I have used in my bracelets and just created these simple but elegant drops with one of those ball head pins, a little melon bead, a copper crystal rondelle spacer, one of those little drucks with the AB finish, a simple loop, connected it, and voila, I have a earring to match my bracelets. And you know, for me, I live in Florida and as the weather gets hotter, I will steer away from necklaces and even heavy jewelry and sometimes just a simple little earring like this and a bracelet is all of the embellishment that the heat will allow me to do. <laughs> so I'm going to repeat the same exact thing. Just finish this earring to show you how simple. Just back that bead off the jaw of my tool a tiny bit. and. Put a, a simple loop in there and I just pull the bead down as the tool closes make sure my loop is centered and when I remove the tool I have this perfect simple loop and it can be opened and added right to the bottom of this ear wire I am so in love with <laughs> this whole set really the, the earrings just made me so happy. I'm already in love with the bracelets, but look at this beautiful earring. Let me zoom back out. Whoops, wrong way. Zoom back out a little bit, but look at this beautiful earring. This The ear wires are just gorgeous, and I just love the flower. It just goes great with the theme of my bracelets of spring flowers and leaves and birds. So I am totally thrilled. Let me clean up my mat and put some of these beads away. And I will put some pictures up of all the bracelets and the earrings at the end of the video. And I also have some more jewelry supervisors from our community to share with you at the end of the video. I am overjoyed as the emails are coming in 
being able to see everyone's little furry faces and all their little helpers and supervisors and the comments have been overwhelmingly joyful everyone just loves seeing it so if you haven't emailed me pictures of your little furry helpers yet I would love to have that I'll put the email to send them to in the description box below the video I will also put any links of anything that I've used that I think you might be interested in in that description box so you have to tap more and then more again sometimes if there's a lot there and I have discount codes for the dollar bead and also for the bargain bead box I can link those below and I am just so thankful that you chose my video today. I appreciate you watching and supporting my channel. And I really hope everyone found a little inspiration or tidbit, a technique from my video, and that you're having fun on your beading mats. Ciao, jewelry making friends.